Welcome back to Honest News. Well, folks, before we get into the message this afternoon, I'd like to just bring your attention to a few things, share a few things with you. Uh, Mike Pompeo, Americans abroad uh, wanting to return home, should do so immediately. Listen to this. More draconian steps are needed in the U.S., these officials say, although they also cast doubt on whether Americans can do what the Chinese did for a mixture of reasons. Political will and deep-rooted cultural inclinations among them. To help quell its outbreak, Beijing embarked on one of the largest mass mobilization efforts in history, closing all schools, forcing millions of people inside, quickly building more than a dozen vast temporary hospitals, deploying thousands of extra medical staff to Wuhan and the surrounding Providence, and meticulously testing and tracing anyone and everyone who may have encountered the virus. But it did a lot more than that. Lockdowns, bans on gatherings. <clears throat> One moment. My uh, browser's messing up because of these stupid ads that run on these websites. Oh, praise the Lord. Lockdowns, bans on gatherings, basic quarantines, testing, hand washing. This is not enough. Did you hear that? This is not enough. So they want to go to more draconian steps. A senior advisor to China's government told USA Today in a phone interview from Beijing, you need to isolate people on an enormous scale in stadiums, big exhibit, exhibit, yeah, in whatever. Can't even get my tongue to say these words. Exhibition halls, wherever you can. It seems extreme. It works, he said. No one left behind was the slogan in Wuhan, he said, no one. In the U.S., Trump has urged Americans to avoid gatherings of 10 or more people and suggested the worst affected states should shutter schools, bars, and restaurants. But overall, he has largely left it to individual states and cities to decide whether to close businesses or explicitly order people to stay at home. Despite evidence from countries in Asia, such as China, Singapore, South Korea, and Taiwan, that aggressively limiting public gatherings and social interactions can help stop transmission, COVID-19, when done in combination with extensive testing and tracing of the disease. Okay, so they want to go to follow what China did. Lock people in their homes and not even let them out. That's what they want to do. Draconian steps. Well, take a look at this. Take a look at this. This is Vladimir Putin, a billionaire that's the president, the leader over Russia right now. Okay? He's standing with a doctor. Now, I want you... To understand something, if you think you're safe from this virus simply because you practice washing your hands and um, social distancing, you would be sadly mistaken. Again, this is Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, with a doctor that's going in to see coronavirus patients that have been infected, that are positive testing positive for the coronavirus, 
Okay. Now, take a look at this video. He's talking this close to this man, right? No social distancing. Okay? Now watch Putin. He's getting suited up to go in to see these patients. But what he doesn't realize is the doctor tested positive for coronavirus after this. Look at, look at the mask that Putin is putting on. Okay? Look at, the, look at the measures he's going through before he goes in. Okay? Now, was he safe? Was he safe, folks? A billionaire president of Russia was not safe. Okay? Now, I want you to understand something. As I've been preaching to you, the only safe place is in the secret place. Okay? No plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. Now, I do still believe we should boost our immune system, take care of our bodies. This is recently posted by the New York Post. Recently, this article came out, March 24th. New York hospitals treating coronavirus patients with vitamin C. Why is this being suppressed by the CDC and by the organization WHO? Why is this being suppressed by the media in the United States as far as on the mainstream news? Seriously sick coronavirus patients in New York State's largest hospital system are being given masses doses of vitamin C based on promising reports that it's helped people in hard to hit China. The post has learned Dr. Andrew G. Weber. Okay. He's over several hospitals in New York and he has been giving his patients as soon as they come in immediately, they receive 1500 milligrams intravenously, they are receiving 1,500 milligrams of vitamin C. Identical amounts of the powerful antitoxin are then readministered three or four times a day, he said. Each dose is more than 16 times the National Institutes of Healthy Daily Recommendation Dietary Allowance for Vitamin C which is only 90 milligrams for adult men and 75 milligrams for adult women. The regimen is based on experimental treatments administered to people with the coronavirus in Shanghai, China, Weber said. The, the patients who received vitamin C did significantly better than those who did not get vitamin C, he said. So my question is, is why is this being suppressed in the United States? How come there's no mention from the CDC or who or anybody that even the doctors that stand up there with Donald Trump press after press meeting? Why is there no mention of boosting the immune system? Why is there no mention of vitamin C? Do you think they really want you to get better? Do you think they really? No. I think there is, with the United Nations working together with Bill Gates and all of them, they're all working towards depopulation. I really believe that. They're talking about death in the numbers of hundreds to 200,000 people. And now the media is hyping that up. A hundred to 200,000 and more people in the United States alone are going to die. Okay. And when the doctors are up there talking about it, there's no real, uh, you know, how do I say? It? There's no empathy involved. Because remember, these scientists, they just see people as energy, they don't see them as a human being. I will guarantee you this if any of these doctors that are working with the CDC, 
And those that stand there with Trump day after day was to get coronavirus, you can be assured that they would not be taking the same treatments as the majority of Americans in the United States. They would immediately be administered vitamin C. They would immediately uh, be given uh, all the things they're keeping you from. Guaranteed. In fact, that's probably Tom Hanks and his wife was probably hooked up to an IV or given uh, vitamins, uh, you know, through intravenous, uh, intravenous, uh, uh, they were most likely, that's the way that they recovered, recovered so quickly. All right. So this was obviously not my message today, but I wanted to share these things with you before we get into the word. So now let's get into the scripture. Acts chapter 27, verse 9. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's word. Acts chapter 27, verse 9. Now, when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading of the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Now, what does Paul know, right? He's just a man of God. What does he know? And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phineas, and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, and lieth toward the south, west, and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, Supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there arose against it a temptuous wind called the Codian. Now, I want you to understand something here, people. This storm that came against the ship they didn't see it coming. Remember, it says just before this, it says a soft wind blew or a south wind blew softly. They thought they obtained their purpose. Remember, they didn't listen to Paul. That's just the way the world is. Oh, we made it. We sailed through that. But just as Paul had warned them, here comes the storm. Are you listening, folks? But not long after, there arose against it a temptuous wind called Eucrolian. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. That's kind of like what's going on right now in the United States. We don't know. Constantly we're hearing these so-called professionals, these so-called experts say, we don't know. We don't know. We're just letting this virus drive. Isn't that what's going on today? We're just going to let the virus. In fact, they asked the question, "How? what's the timeline for this thing? He said, well, that's up to the virus. Well, wait a minute. Then what's all the social distancing for if it's up to the virus? What's why are they telling us to wash our hands if it's up to the virus? You see what's going on here? The doctors are letting the virus drive. They're letting the virus take control. It's up to the virus, the doctors say. Kind of a contradiction, wouldn't you think? 
And running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat. Which, when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship. And fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. The third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, listen to this, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. That's what's going on right now in America. All hope is being taken away. Listen, people. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you, be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. And he said unto me, Paul, Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, behold, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, that you still are speaking. You're still giving us direction. We're not alone in the storm, Lord. You and I, your people, we believe you, Lord. We believe your word is true. I pray, Father, that your people will more than ever know your voice. They'll realize the seriousness, Lord, of knowing your voice. Pray, Lord, you anoint and bless this message as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Paul had a word from God in the storm. Are you listening, folks? Knowing God's voice in the storm. If I was to give a title to the message. Knowing God's voice in the storm. We are in a storm. Make no mistake about it. It's dangerous. Are you listening? Even the loss of lives. Not just infrastructure. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Even as Paul said to them back there, be of good cheer. For I believe God. Are you listening, folks? 
Be of good cheer. I believe God. You keep hearing them saying, we're in this together. Well, how many know God's people, we're in this together? And I would say unto you, brothers and sisters, be of good cheer. I believe God. I believe God. Amen? And I would say unto you, just as Paul said to them back there, stay in the ship. Continue to listen to this broadcast. Stay in the ship. Amen. They didn't want to listen to Paul. They wanted to jump out of the boat. They wanted to throw the prisoners overboard. Are you listening? So they wouldn't escape. Let them die out here. Paul says they don't need to die. Amen. You know, when man's in control, they don't care about casualties because they're always looking at numbers. Well, if our percentage is low enough, that's okay. Doesn't matter 100, 200,000 people die. Are you listening? When you have those that are in leadership that are preparing for 100 to 200 to 250,000, 300,000 people to die, they're not working real hard, are they? Hmm? Pretty relaxed if they're going to let that many people perish. God said to Paul, not one will perish if, if they stay in the ship. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you go on to read the story, you find that God did spare their lives, every one of them, just as he said. Not one soul, not one person was lost. Not one life was lost. Amen. We've got to know God's voice in this hour, people. I may know that. We got to hear his voice. I wonder who's inspiring these pastors today that are not obeying the laws of the land and those that are saying they're being persecuted and being arrested for gathering together. Their congregations, when they should be streaming over the Internet, You think it's God, folks? You think the Holy Spirit is inspiring them? Because I don't think the Holy Spirit is inspiring them. And I will say this to you. It's not persecution against the church. All, even the sports arenas have been shut down. NBA, football, everything, basketball, everything. NFL and NBA, all of it's been shut down. The whole basketball season has been shut down. So it's not like this is an isolated thing that just the church is being persecuted. It'd be different if it was just the church. But this is for... To save lives. Right? Social distancing. Separate. Right? I just showed you how Putin was standing on an elevator with a man that has coronavirus. Think about that for a moment. Think about it. His money could not save him. Just think about this. What about the prince over Monaco? 
supposed to be the wealthiest place on the earth. He contracted COVID-19 or the coronavirus. And he spread it to Prince Charles. These are some very powerful people on the earth. And their money can't protect them. Hmm? Where they live can't protect them. It seems nobody's exempt. Nobody's safe from this thing. Wherever it came from. But there is one place safe. And that's in the secret place. Of the Most High. Under the shadow of the Almighty. No plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. Be of good cheer. For I believe God. Amen. Be of good cheer. For I believe God. Now, heaven and earth is going to pass away. So we know the ship's going to be destroyed, right? As far as the this broadcast, the equipment we're using, just as they were in that boat, the boat was destroyed. Heaven and earth is going to pass away. But Jesus said, not one jot or tittle. His word in no wise shall pass till all this is fulfilled. So the only thing that we really have that's not going to pass away, is the word of God. Paul had a word from God in the storm. Are you listening, folks? What is our value on the word? And I'm not talking about just reading your Bible or getting a scripture. I'm talking about knowing God's voice. Knowing his voice. Do you know that when you hear a minister ministered, do you know whether you're hearing from God or not? Is there a witness in your spirit? Most ministers today are offering a message with no life. There's no life in their words. Amen? There's no anointing, no life. Hallelujah. How many ministers today believe God? Think about that. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that your this minister, some of you call me your pastor. I believe God. I believe God. And the message I would share with you today in the storm, be of good cheer. Be not afraid. Amen? If we will stay in the secret place, if we will abide in the secret place under the shadow of the Almighty, not one of us will be lost. Amen. We must continue to abide under his wings, under his shadow. We must delight ourselves under his shadow. Amen. We must come and abide continually in the secret place of the Most High. That's the only place where you're safe from this storm. Amen? It's not just a physical storm, it's spiritual. They're saying that this virus, they're calling it an an invisible enemy. In fact, they're saying it doesn't even exist until it attaches itself 
to a human body. I want you to understand something, brothers and sisters. No matter how dangerous it gets, I believe God. Amen. And I'm going to continue to give to you what the Lord gives to me. You want to stay tuned. Amen. Now, I'm not encouraging you just to listen to God's voice through this minister. I'm, I'm, I want you to know his voice for yourself. You must know his voice for yourself. He said, my sheep know my voice. Says they won't listen to the voice of a stranger. They'll flee the voice of a stranger. But he said, they know my voice. Do you know his voice? If you don't know his voice, you need to. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, if we've ever needed to know his voice, people. If we ever needed to know him. Amen. We've got to know his voice. His voice must become more important than any other voice. Amen. Be of good cheer. For I believe God. I believe him. Now, this can be applied to every promise in the Bible. I believe God. Everything he said, I believe God. Do you? Do you believe God? That he is true and he is faithful. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe he's going to do just what he said he'd do. And he's going to bring us through to the other side, people. If we will abide in the secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Praise your holy name, Lord. Praise your holy name, Lord. We love you. We appreciate you, Lord. We thank you for comforting our hearts. We thank you for touching us, Lord, giving us peace in the storm. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In times like this, you need a Savior. In times like this, you need a Savior, be very sure, be very sure, you're anchored in the solid rock, this rock is Jesus, he's the only one, this rock is Jesus. God's son, be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds the solid rock. Hallelujah, I 
believe God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, God. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Glory to the Lamb, people. Hallelujah. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will work till the day is done. There's not a friend like our lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will work till the day is done. There's not a friend like our lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got the power.